adding rain for a dramatic photo. This is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Hi, I'm your host, Vanelli, and joining me today is the Insider Group here at Skylum. Now, these people are um, avid users of Luminar, and they're, they're here to ask the questions I'm sure you're wondering about if you're watching this on a rebroadcast. Now, you could join us Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and join in on the conversation. If you have a question, leave them in the comments below, and one of the insiders, myself or Carl Peterson, who's helping moderate the chat, will be able to answer those questions. All right? So, guys, let's dive right in. Here is an image. <laughs> the original one I had was a portrait, and I realized I'm going to try to stray away from portraits and stick to wildlife, flowers, landscapes for you guys. So here we are. Here's the original image. And after a little bit of developing, we're going to develop the image properly and then add a layer along with these, uh, this rain. All right. So let's begin. I'm going to start under the edit tool and revert to original. Give it a second. So here's the original image. Now, first thing that bugs me, of course, is the crop. So I want to start out with the cropping. And with the crop, I want to try to zoom in as much as I can, even though this was shot with a macro lens, I should have gotten closer so there wouldn't be as much cropping. Now this leaf here, I don't have a problem with it being cut off because it's kind of distracting the way I had it before. Let's leave this one in and I'll put this on the rules of third. Right about there is good. All right, I like where that's at. I like where my flower is. But again, the, the attention isn't being drawn to the flower. It's more like down here. So we're gonna fix that in a moment. First, let's work on develop. So I wanna come over here and start with uh, enhance AI. And what I want to do, and actually, before I do Click. that, you know what? I forgot, I did something a little bit special. I did a preset first. Now, if I didn't do this preset ahead of time and try to do it afterwards, it's going to mess up, it will erase all of my changes. So we want to start with that first. And I want to apply it. Ooh, I like best close up. That looked good. Let's see, distinctive drafts. That looks nice. And I think. Um, micro world was another one I did. Ooh, that looks good too. So I have three good choices. Let me see this one. That's okay. I think I like. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to stick with distinctive drops. All right. Now I'm going to. Here's my edit. There it is at the very bottom. Now let's continue with the enhancement. So I'm going to come over here to enhance AI. And I want to use this tool to improve color, detail, tone, and depth. Good. So that's giving me a good exposure of the image. While I'm here, let's bump up the details a little bit. I'm going to try Carl's approach. He likes going large first, <laughs> then medium. Yeah, I'll stick with that. So that, that looks good there. All right, so this is a little too bright down here. So let's fix that with a vignette. And then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna choose as my center point. Dial this in, make it a little darker, there we go. And while we're here, let's increase the inner light. Right about there, all right. Good. So now we took an image that kind of was flat and dull. It was flat and dull, and we developed it properly. Now that's great. Now let's add a little more dramatic, um, dramatic to this image or drama. So I'm going to click on the on the layers panel. I'm going to click on the plus icon. Now I already added a couple of these rain textures. Now the rain textures, and I'll show you where I got them from. Our good friend Gary McIntyre uh, gave me these. They were free. So under textures, here's Gary McIntyre. 
and under rain. And you can go to Gary McIntyre's website to download those. Uh, so, and I selected one of the rain, I think it was rain number one. So let me grab that one first. Yep, it was rain number one. So I like how this is, I like how this is. Now, the layer blend mode is what's gonna make a difference. I usually start with soft light, but in this case, soft light's not working for me. Maybe if I dial it back a bit, but even still, it's just, it's not, it's not my, it's my typical go-to layer blend. In this case, it's not. Lighten and screen, I found, did a better choice because I don't want it to look too fake. Well, I don't want it to look fake at all, but I don't want it to look overboard. So here, I'm noticing the rain is there. It's not predominant, but it's that little extra element that makes the image look good. So I'm on that layer. So any changes I make right now are on that layer. So let's try structure. I'm gonna increase the boost and apply a little bit of the amount. There we go. And just keep boosting up a bit. Now let's see the effect. Without it, give it a second. With it, and it just gave us just enough. Now notice down here, I like how it looks here. I wish I had more of that up here. So I'm gonna come back up here to the layer. And let's see if I, by switching it, flipping it, it makes a difference and no, it doesn't. The opposite, nope. I like it the direction that it's at. And I could rotate this a little bit more and then expand it out. There we go, and let's, yeah, I kind of like it better on that angle that we, that we had it. All right, that'll, that'll be fine. All right, now I'm gonna come back. Now I already applied the vignette once. Interesting. Oh, because we're on that layer. So look, look what I just noticed. So we're on this layer, I was looking for a vignette and I realized it's on this layer, all right? So I applied the vignette to this layer right here. Let's apply a vignette to the top layer and let's see what happens. So I'm gonna come up to the top, vignette. Once again, I'm gonna choose the subject, which is this the flower itself, dial it back, good. Now it's getting rid of some of that excess that I had in the bottom. And I like it right about there. That looks great. Now, keep in mind, I can always come back to the layer properties. And if Lighten isn't working for me, maybe switch over to screen and then dial back the opacity to it, but that's gonna give us um, a large amount here. Now I could go in with a brush and just paint in or paint out some of the streaks. In this case, honestly, I kind of like lighten better with a full strength because it's there, but it's not overboard. All right, and there we have it. All right, so before and after, ready? This is what we started with. And this is what we ended with. All right. So let's open it up for discussion. Carl. Okay. Go ahead and you can unmute your microphones and ask questions related to today's presentation. Yeah, Finelli. <clears throat> How can you put raindrops on in Neo? Is that possible? Yeah, this, I have yet to find that. I'm sure there, there are textures out there that does that. I've yet to find them. That's more of a Photoshop trick that I've seen people do in Photoshop where they actually create a raindrop graphically and then apply them right where they want it. Mm. Um, Corey Barker does incredible illustrations like that. Is he, the, um, is he the 3D boy from Yes, Kelly. 3D boy. 3D man, but yes. <laughs> Ooh. 
uh, who asked, can you clone parts of a layer? Absolutely. Mm. On one, on, but one part, Kyle, what do we need? They said, can we clone layers or can we clone parts of a layer? Well, I, I would yeah. think you'd have to do a, a duplicate on the layer, but we don't have that, right? So how do you do it? Well, yeah, right, yeah, right now we don't have the clone tool. Yeah, but you can add the layer again. You can, you yeah. can do the yes, layer yeah, again. Yeah, you're right. So, okay, great. So good. Thank you. What was that? Probably Kurt? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no sh shocker. All right, so here we are. Here we are. Now watch. Um, what they're saying is what you can do, which would be pretty cool, is I can put it in the position I want. Then come down here to lighten again. Actually, lighten's not going to do it for us, but will be screen. There we go. So let's put screen up here, dial it back right about there. Let's say bump up some of the structure. There we go. Now go back around that layer. And I'm gonna do a layer mask where I wanna erase majority parts of the image. And actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna paint in. So I have less to paint in. I wanna paint in at an opacity, let's say 62. And now, now you can selectively paint where you want it to appear. And then for that layer up on top, I take it and dial it back even further. Right about there. Great call, Kirk. There, there we go. So instead of using the clone and stamp tool, that was another, that was another uh, tip and trick. We can go in there. Great. All right, guys. Well, hey, stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. Guys, thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you at the next coffee break. Oh.